Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about the best way to assess discriminant validity in SIM using the AMOS software. So before we kind of jump into specifically uh, the nuts and bolts of how to assess discriminant validity, let's talk a little bit about what it is. Uh, so discriminant validity is really this idea that are your constructs uh, different from one another? Do they distinguish from one another? Sometimes you'll see in models we will have two constructs that are very highly correlated with one another and the argument could be made that well really you don't have two different constructs. Maybe it's just one real construct that you're measuring, you're calling it two different things, but it's really just one. And so discriminant validity is really this test to assess do your constructs really distinguish from one another? Are they really different? Uh, and the, the primary way that you see this done uh, in the past is primarily through kind of what I would call the gold standard, which was is using this kind of Fornell and Larker method, uh, which was looking at average variance extracted versus shared variance. And I'll kind of go over that exactly of like how they uh, got the convergent discriminant validity, and we'll talk about kind of the, the new and improved way to do that. So let's look at this kind of simple example here, just give us some context here when we're talking about discriminant validity. Let's say I had a simple model that was uh, looking at adaptive behavior. This is from a restaurant setting. So did the server adapt their behavior to you? Or at least did you, did you feel like they did? Uh, and did that lead to customer delight? And did that delight lead to positive word of mouth? You know, you're going to tell other people the great experience you had. So simple model. Um, and typically what happens is you'll see the validity is assessed in kind of a confirmatory factor analysis. And so this is what it would look like in a CFA where you've got your kind of unobservables going to your indicators and you're testing your kind of confirmatory factor analysis. So kind of running that CFA, the first thing you would want to do to try to assess convergent validity is that you would look at what they call the average variance extracted for each construct. Now what that is, is so like for adaptive behavior, you're going to run that CFA and it's going to give you the loadings, the factor loadings for each one of those items on your unobservable construct. Also what it's going to give you is a squared multiple correlation or an R square. Uh, and that is how much of the variance you are explaining. And the average variance extracted is basically where you take the uh, square square multiple correlation of the R square for each one of your indicators within a construct and you just average them. You know, so for adaptive behavior here, we had five indicators and the squared multiple correlation of those was 0 0.80, 84.76, and I took an average of that and gives the average variance extracted which is 0.78. And then I did that for a customer delight, also did it for a positive word of mouth. Well, Fornell and Larker uh, note in there that if your AVE, or average variance, average variance extracted, is over 0 0.50, then you've established convergent validity that your items are converging on that uh, unobservable construct. They also say to kind of establish discriminant validity is through what they call shared variance. And how you establish the shared variance is, is they would say, uh, get your constructs and do a correlation uh, between your constructs, which would look sim something similar like this. Um, and you're going to do kind of a comparison of what they call the shared variance versus your average variance extracted. Now, shared variance is basically the correlation between constructs squared. Uh, so it's not just the correlation, it's the correlation squared, and that's what they considered kind of the shared variance. So if your average variance extracted was higher than the shared variance between, uh, you know, your other constructs, then they said that you've established kind of discriminant validity because the average variance extracted is higher than, it, than it's being shared with other constructs out there. And that's, again, kind of the gold standard that had been used kind of over and over to establish kind of convergent discriminant validity. Well, where's the problem then uh, with this? The, the problem though is, is in this uh, shared variance, if you noticed, it was really examining this on the construct level. You know, when you're talking about that correlation, it was the correlation between constructs as a whole. It wasn't looking at individual indicators anymore. Um, 
and that kind of average variance extracted, you know, compared to shared variance method, you know, is also kind of susceptible to detecting kind of arbitrary violations too. And so, well, what's what's the alternative? What's better out there? Well, the answer is really um, this technique called the heterotrait and monotrait ratio of correlations. And what this does is it doesn't look at um, kind of shared variance, if you will, on a construct level. It looks at it more on a individual indicator level across constructs. Uh, so it gives a little bit more specificity uh, and it's really kind of the best balance between high detection and kind of like these kind of low false positive rates too. And if you're looking for more information on why heterotrait monotrait is really superior to um, the average variance extracted and shared variance, there's a great uh, article out there by Clay Voorhees where he did this huge kind of simulation study kind of showing why the heterotrait monotrait uh, ratio correlations is really kind of a better way to do assess discriminant validity than the traditional average variance extracted versus shared variance. So let's get into what is this heterotrait monotrait, uh, you know, how do I, what does it mean? How do I do it? What's the formula to calculate it? And, and all that kind of good stuff too. So let's look at, um, if we just had wanted to look at the discriminant validity between, let's say, just my adaptive behavior construct and word of mouth. And so initially I do a correlation between all of the indicators between adaptive behavior and word of mouth. Here you can see I had th five adaptive behavior indicators. I had three word of mouth. And you can see through this kind of correlation here, the heterotrait correlations, which are in that kind of red box there, are the correlations that are across constructs, if you will. So you can see like adapt one, this first column up here uh, is going to word of mouth one and word of mouth two and three. And so it's basically looking at the correlations across constructs. So those are the, what they call the heterotrait correlations. The monotrait correlations are the correlations within constructs. So the indicators that are within a construct. So for instance, over here in word of mouth, you've got uh, the correlations of word of mouth one, two, and three just within that particular construct. Same thing over here with adapt. Uh, you've got its monotrait correlations. So you, with, you're distinguishing between two constructs. You would have two monotrait correlations, and then you'd have one heterotrait uh, correlation. And so the, the formula to calculate this um, heterotrait monotrait formula is this one right here. And if you're like me, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, good gravy, this thing's just you know, ridiculous. I'm, you can just kind of turn your brain off and be like, I'm never going to use that. All right. So it looks worse than it actually is. It's not that bad. Right. So don't freak out. I'm going to break it down into its pieces and you'll see it's really not that bad at all. It looks pretty gruesome with all these kind of Greek letters and everything else. But in retrospect, it's not so bad. So the first thing we need to uh, to do is just kind of break down what that formula is into kind of layman's terms, right? Well, what it is is basically your uh, your top numerator there is going to be the average of the um, heterotrait. So you're going to take kind of all the heterotrait correlations and you take an average of them, and then you're going to um, divide that by the square root of the average correlation of the monotrait for like, for instance, adaptive behavior. And you're gonna multiply that times the average correlations of the monotrait of your other one, your positive word of mouth. All right, so let's go back to our example here and should make a little bit more sense. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find out what is the heterotrait correlation in this uh, between adaptive behavior and word of mouth. So again, it's all those correlations are in that kind of red box. If I, you know, take an average of those, it gives me the average correlation of 0.282. Okay, so I've got, uh, I got the first part of my formula. Now I need to get the monotrait correlations. So now I'm going to take, for instance, positive word of mouth. I'm going to get the correlations, those monotrait correlations, 0 0.79, 77, 73, right? Divide that by three. And that's going to give me the monotrait for positive word of mouth. I'm going to do the exact same thing 
for adaptive behavior. So when I do this, not only do I have the hetero trait, now I've got the mono trait correlations. And now we can just kind of plug them into our formula. All right, so we got our hetero trait uh, correlations average of the hetero trait at the top, 0.282. And we're going to divide that by the square root of the two mono trait uh, correlations, the averages of those. And that gives us a 0.282 divided by 0.7724, which gives us a hetero trait mono trait ratio of correlations of 0.365. Well, is that good or bad? Um, so if you have a value that is greater than 0.85, so if your hetero trait mono trait ratio uh, is greater than 0.85, that means you have discriminant validity problems then. It means your, your, your two constructs are not distinguishing from one another. If your values are under 0.85, then that indicates that discriminant validity is established and the two constructs are really, for the most part, distinctly different from one another. So you've kind of established you know, that they are, are different. And so with the hetero trait mono trait, we would, you know, we would look at those for uh, all the kind of pairs. So for instance, we have three constructs. And so I would look at that between adaptive behavior and word of mouth. And I would also look at it between adaptive behavior and customer delight. And I would also look at it between customer delight and, you know, word of mouth. So I would look across those constructs to see uh, that hetero trait mono trait ratio of correlations. So good news, bad news when we talk about uh, getting the results of this, because initially you're thinking, please tell me I don't have to hand calculate all of this uh, to get the hetero trait mono trait. So Amos uh, in its kind of standard package uh, does not give you the hetero trait mono trait ratio of correlations. Uh, it's fairly new. They don't have it included in the newer updates. I don't know why, but they don't. Um, and so it does not initially come with, uh, with Amos. Now, here's the good news, though. The good news is there's some kind souls that are on the Internet who have decided to come up with some plugins that you can download into your Amos uh, software, and it will basically run the hetero trait, mono trait uh, analysis for you. One of those is James Gaskin, which I'm uh, kind of showing here. If you're not familiar with James Gaskin, he does a lot of great stuff, especially when it comes to structural equation modeling out there. Uh, and he does some kind of plugins, which uh, can really kind of help you kind of save some time. One of them is really handy that's out there that is the hetero trait mono trait ratio of correlations. You can download that into kind of your Amos plugins and then it'll run it for you. And it'll run all the possible combinations literally within seconds instead of you having to hand calculate those. Um, but I would say, you know, check that out, especially if you're uh, trying to assess kind of discriminant validity through the hetero trait, mono trait. So when you're talking about, you know, what's the kind of the best way to assess um, discriminant validity, it seems by far right now um, that the kind of running theme is hetero trait, mono trait is really the best way to do this. It's the most valid way to ass assess discriminant validity. If you're looking for more information about um, how to assess validity or even how to, how to run uh, very basic SIM models to even more complex, you know, advanced SIM models, I encourage you to check out my book. Um, and as always, if you saw value in this uh, video, I'd ask that you'd like and subscribe uh, for more videos to come. Um, and that's all I got for, for this week. I hope you all have a great week. Good people.